Just to, to conclude, I've just two questions. Obviously, we've set out a, a roadmap of phases which may be brought forward or may take longer than we anticipate. But have we set out objective criteria to allow, for what will allow us to move from one phase to the next? And if so, in terms of transmission rate, in terms of ICU capacity, or any criteria? And if so, can those criteria be published? And where exactly are we? These are, are questions for, for Dr. Holan. Where exactly are we at with regard to transmission now in the country? Is, is sustained human transmission now limited to some parts of the country? Uh, have we managed to limit it to some parts of the country? In broad terms, we have effectively extinguished it from the community in general, right across the country. Uh, and much of the caseload that we see now being reported is reported in respect of particular settings. We, we are st still seeing some positive numbers coming through residential care facilities, even though the numbers re has reduced very substantially and through some occupational settings. Not to say that there are in some cases, but we have effectively extinguished it, which is the strategy from the very start. We have to start with suppressing this infection across the community to begin with before we have a chance of protecting nursing homes or other specific uh, settings. Uh, in respect of the, the specific question around criteria uh, and measures, they may change from time to time, the actual threshold or the level at which we think it's important. So how we view, let's say, 30 people in an intensive care unit at a point in time uh, would be very different if the day previously the number was 29 or if the day previously the number was 3. Uh, and so to set out the, the particular number depends very much on the context. So we have a series of criteria uh, that are set out in the government's uh, roadmap for recovery uh, okay. uh, that set out the disease and a range of other characteristics in relation to testing, contact tracing, in relation to health service capacity, uh, and in relation to the broad impact uh, of the measures on the health and well-being of the public. All of these are taken into account in, in the staged re recommendations and advice to government around uh, easing restrictions. Thanks. Uh, can I just take... Uh, sorry. Uh, I just need, I need to get us out sure. here. I just want to ask. What, can I take from what you said about transmission that we no longer have sustained human transmission? In all areas of no, the that's, well, that's an absolute statement. I couldn't say that in absolute terms. We have it down to a very, very low level, effectively, I'm saying. But I can't say that there isn't. Uh, we don't have widespread sustained community transmission. We know that because we're not seeing the caseload, in spite of the fact that we have very substantial testing capacity in place. We're testing large numbers of people relative to the numbers of positive cases that are being identified. So we can be assured about that. Thank you for your forbearance. Uh, Mr. Brisbane, did you want to? I, I was just going to add that in addition to the advice uh, that Tony has talked about on criteria, published on Friday was both public health advice, an economic assessment and a social assessment, and the government published all of those. So we pass the advice into government who make a decision, and they pull in multiple perspectives in making that. No, no, I understand, but it's the medical criteria Absolutely. that will enable us to move forward or prevent us from moving forward that I was interested in. Thank you.